Well, hi there. My name is uh, Darren Nash. Welcome to the TechBods Order YouTube channel. And uh, in this video, I would like to do something that I've only ever done once before, and that is I'm going to do an unboxing video. A uh, previous unboxing video I did on this channel proved pretty popular, so it seemed appropriate to do another one, this time for the remarkable Papo 2019 Spinosaurus Egyptiarchus, which uh, I've only recently obtained as part of the uh, collection. Uh, here this model came from the brilliant people at everythingdinosaur.com and if you're interested in getting hold of this piece then get it from them, everythingdinosaur.com. Um, so it's made by the French company Papo, which I presume I'm pronouncing uh, correctly. Uh, I don't actually know much about uh, Papo. Um, I, I know they're a French company, I know that they're something, I mean they say they're over 20 years old. Um, they make a huge range of figures. They make over currently over 600 figures, loads of animals, wild animals, farm animals, loads of kind of like little um, knights from the Middle Ages, um, and uh, and they also do a load of dinosaurs. Now their modern animals, their living animals, are really good. I've got many of them. They're widely available. Uh, here's just a few that I have to hand. Uh, you can see they're like they're really nicely sculpted. Loads of fantastic detail. This is actually meant. This is meant to be a Komodo dragon, but it's it's proportions. It actually looks more like a, a water monitor, some other uh, monitor lizard. But but whatever. All of their animal models are you know really really nicely done. Um, that's kind of the the background to, to what Papo do. I have to say that I'm not really a huge fan of their dinosaurs. Um, this is their the famous 55011 2007 uh, Spinosaurus, and like um, nearly all of their dinosaurs, you can see okay, there's the the level of detail on the sculpt is is phenomenal. A lot of them have you know mobile lower jaws. Um, um, yeah, the, you know the, the the detailing, the painting is all really nice. But in terms of the overall look of the animals, they often look like uh, carbon copies of the animals from the Jurassic Park franchise, um, which isn't great because um, yeah, I, I, at least that's the case. That's the case for some of the Papo dinosaurs. Not not true for all of them, but yeah, they tend not to be. I mean, I respect the you know the. The, the, the craft that's gone into the construction of a model like this. A lot of work and you know, a level of detail is phenomenal, but the overall look of them, they're not quite right. They're not really kind of up-to-date, modern-looking dinosaurs. So um, um, with that kind of slightly negative take on their dinosaurs, you know, what do we, what do we think about the, this 2019 um, Papo Spinosaur? Well, um, First impressions, are, I kind of say a similar thing about it. I mean, the level of detail, you know, what it actually looks like as a, as a model is, is very impressive. But in terms of whether I think it's really what Spinosaurus would look like, I don't know. There's some things about it that I don't, I don't quite like. But let's find out when I get it out of the box. So, um, uh, first thing worth saying is this is the special uh, limited edition boxed piece, and if you are if you are a, a true you know frothing at the mouth crazy obsessive collector person, then well here you go you got it finished. You put this up on a shelf and you're going to leave it, and you're not going to let any kids touch it or anything like that. You're certainly not going to take it out of the box. Um, you'd have to have a lot of space to do that. Uh, I don't have sufficient space to just leave things on a on a shelf. Um, I do want it out of the box. The box is uh, 47 centimeters uh, long. Um, so, and as you can see, it's it's pretty chunky. Um, the fact that it's an open fronted box and they haven't really gone to town in terms of like you know the landscape and the artwork on the box means I'm not going to feel too ashamed about uh, breaking it open. Although there are tabs, so I don't need to actually break it open. I'm going to be fairly gentle with it. Um, and um, there's some, you know, some uh, pretty decent information on the back. We've got we've got what looks like a fairly accurate timeline showing the course of the uh, uh, from about 120 million years ago until the modern times. And just in case you weren't sure, when Homo sapiens sapiens is extant, that's in the present. 
I'm not quite sure why people still do use Homo sapiens sapiens. It's a, it's a hark back to the idea that Neanderthals were a subspecies of Homo sapiens. So then we would be Homo sapiens sapiens, and Neanderthals would be Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. There is still the idea there might be some ex fossil subspecies of Homo sapiens, but hey, I'm going way off tangent here. And they sh what I really like here is they're showing, they're saying, look, Spinosaurus lives here round about 100 million years ago, and Tyrannosaurus rex, the orange figure here, is at round about 66, 67, 68 million years ago. So they're showing quite nicely these two famous animals, which they have to scale here on the box as well. They're saying, haha, they're not contemporaneous. So hey kids, if you're smashing your Tyrannosaurus and Spinosaurus toys together, you're technically being very inaccurate. Of course, the Papo Tyrannosaurus rex um, I'm sure most of you know, is is infamous because it's just everywhere. There's no escape from the Papo Tyrannosaurus Rex. There's even a Facebook group called, I think it's called, Oh No, it's the Papo Tyrannosaurus Rex because it's used all the time in like as a stock image. Um, I don't think I even own it. Anyway, right, so there's there you go. That's the, the look of the box. Uh, luckily, the box is so big that I don't have to, you know, do any weird gymnastics or anything to keep it in shot while I'm talking. And I also don't have to snip through any sellotape or anything like that. I'm able to just open a couple of little cardboard tabs. There you go, we're in the box. I'm going to pull the figure out this way. Going, going well so far. Um, not only am I going to do an unboxing, I'm also going to kind of review the toy as best I can off the top of my head without consulting the literature or whatnot. There you go, that happened all nice and clean. The box is still in good shape. Put that to one side. So now we have um, our creature um, inside a kind of plastic base where it's held in place by uh, clip ties, which I have some sturdy scissors here. You'll need sturdy scissors uh, to uh, get through this. Bear with me. wonder if anyone's ever injured themselves while opening a toy in a video. Right, that's all three snipped. I should now be able to lift. Uh, the, the, the Papo symbol reminds me of Ikea, which is uh, my least favorite um, of the shops in the world. But let's not talk about that. Okay, it's now in a molded plastic base and I just need to gently pop the characters feet and hands out. And there you go, done. That wasn't that wasn't as difficult as I expected it to be. So here we go. The 2019 Papo Spinosaurus. Uh, now, as some of you know, this was a much-awaited figure and its release was delayed by months. It was due out in, I think, late summer of 2019, August, and uh, it wasn't actually av available for purchase until something like October. Um, but whatever, it is now available. It's not cheap. It costs about 50 British pounds. Um, which, and I think in the US, I think it's something like $60. Um, so I wouldn't buy this for like a kid to play with. You know, you'd only buy this if you're some, someone with disposable income, let's put it that way. So without wanting to damage the model, I'm going to be caref carefully measure it. Approximate straight line length is is 39.5 centimeters. That's just shy of 40 centimeters. And <coughs> okay, as with the um, 2007 um, Spinosaurus, the 55011 Spinosaurus, which is like I say, based on the Spinosaurus that featured in the. Jurassic Park 3 or whatever it was called, that terrible film with the Spinosaurus that swallows the cell phone. Um, like that one, we have a mobile lower jaw. And we can see a big floppy elongate pointed tongue. I don't think I would give a Spinosaurus a tongue like that if I was making one. Um, one of the unusual features of these dinosaurs is that they, they have this, what's called a distal rosette. Well, it shouldn't be called distal, okay, that's technically the wrong term. 
the term distal in anatomy refers to the um, ends of appendages like limbs and tails the part that's furthest away from the center of the body. Proximal means close to the center of the body, distal means far away, and you should only use distal for appendages. When people talk about the distal part of the shoulder blade or the distal part of the ilium, that makes no sense. It's technically incorrect. So I was wrong in just saying distal rosette. Uh, let's say anterior rosette. There's, these, there's this kind of rounded um, like uh, part of the upper jaw, also in the lower jaw, where there are the, these biggest like fang-like teeth. And then posterior to that rosette at the front of the lower jaw, the two halves of the lower jaw are actually quite close together. So, uh, so the bone is kind of the overall the lower jaw is kind of shaped like a, an inverted Y, capital Y, which probably means that the tongue is uh, positioned quite far uh, posterior. Um, I do like a lot of the detail on the head. Now, my camera uh, isn't good enough for to allow us to get like really good high fidelity shots but um, if you can see the the eye is actually really nicely uh, painted you know it doesn't have a, an off-center uh, pupil it's got a little rounded pupil there's various crests lumps and bumps around the eye I'm not sure that's technically correct I haven't seen that in that's not the case in Spinosaurus I don't think but there is we do know that the animal did have some kind of like serrated midline crest uh, on the top of the nasal bones here which has been shown accurately. So they've also given it this kind of like serrated uh, ridge along the top of the um, top of the neck. It's got the kind of M-shaped sail, which is um, depicted by Nizar Ibrahim and colleagues in 2014, and has been you know depicted widely in artwork uh, ever since then. Um, still, some argument as to whether it's exactly uh, accurate. Um, uh, and then the tail. Now we'll get to the tail in a minute because it, it's 2020 and I'm sure you've heard uh, the fuss about the tail of Spinosaurus. So as you can see this animal has relatively short hind limbs relative to its forelimbs. Do I have something handy that I can stand it on? I've just grabbed the nearest book which happens to be Hallett and Wadle's The Sauropod Dinosaurs. Um, so this animal does actually stand quadrupedally like thus. And you should be able to see that it is actually knuckle walking. Well, okay, I said that, but that's what most people have said, that, that if Spinosaurus is going to be depicted as a quadruped, then um, maybe it was a knuckle walker. And when Ibrahim et al. first published their quadrupedal model for Spinosaurus in 2014, they kind of Im implied, I can't remember, they, they possibly even stated that outright, that maybe the animal is supporting part of its weight on its, on its forelimbs, um, you know, when it walks on land, when it's not swimming. But notice that, can you see, this model is not actually knuckle walking, as in it's not actually putting weight on the bones of its uh, fingers, like, like that or like that, it is instead putting all of its weight on its ungles. These are the bones that form the tips of your fingers and toes. In us, we only have nails on our ungles, but of course, if you're a normal animal um, or a, a, a dinosaur, you have massive claws uh, sheathing your ungles. And notice that the Papo 2019 Spinosaurus is putting its weight on its claws. So it's not knuckle walking. It's engaging in a form of locomotion called Nictograde. Nicto... is that right? N that means nail slow. Nicto... Uh, whatever. The name for um, a style of walking that involves supporting your weight on your um, ungles, on your claws. Um, of course, animals that walk on their ungles are unguli grade, like uh, ungulates, but they're so named because they're walking on their, you know, ungles like that, not not like that. Um, if I didn't already mention it, um, armadillos and pangolins uh, support part of their weight on the uh, extensor, you know, the dorsal surfaces of their ungles like that. Um, I've written about this on Tetrapod Zoology a couple of times, and I have seen the name, Ni I, th I think it's Nictograde, which just doesn't seem right. I have to check that, but I think it's Nictograde, which means claw walking. Um, I'll use that term, because it's less problematic than the other one. Um, yeah, they have made this Spinosaurus a claw walker. It's supporting its weight 
on the extent of surfaces of its massive claws. Now, is that plausible or is that possible? Well, what we know of the forelimbs of these animals, uh, no, there's no weight supporting adaptations that are obvious in their, their hands or their forelimbs. Um, certainly doesn't look like you would expect them, or you certainly wouldn't expect them to be putting weight on the on the hand claws. So, um, yeah, that's, that's an issue. Um, the problem is, of course, that if you are going to have this relatively short-legged, uh, as in hind legs, short hind-legged animal in a quadrupedal pose, then you know, how do you pose it? I guess they had to, they had to come up with that, uh, they had to come up with some kind of solution. Notice the animal has got kind of, you know, its its forelimbs are sticking quite far out to the side, which again, presumably it would have to, to, uh, um, yeah, support that pose. I wonder if they based this on Davida Bonadonna's um, uh, various beautiful uh, colour illustrations. Uh, which were done to accompany the Ibrahim et al. 2014 uh, publicity. Um, so yeah, again, I mean, yeah, really liking the details. I like the colour scheme. I mean, this this isn't overstated. This looks like a sensible, um, you know, colour scheme for a very big animal that's living in, you know, tropical estuarine habitats. Uh, you know, whatever. That's all cool. Um, mouth interior has got kind of like a reddish pinkish hue which again looks pretty plausible the paint job is pretty good I mean there's a little bit of um, overspill where the the slight off-white uh, coloration from the teeth has um, run onto the jaws in a couple of places but it's not too bad and, and like I said the eye is uh, they're obviously paying close attention to getting the eye right um, I'm not super keen on what looks like a slight lateral flexing of the uh, body. There's this kind of you know, vague, very loose uh, S shape. I cannot, I can't, no, I just can't, I can't do that because I'm looking at a mirrored version of myself. There's a vague S shape to the the spine there, which um, I don't know. It doesn't look, doesn't look like anything really over the top, but. Um, yeah, it sort of gives the animal like a weird sinuosity that uh, something about that I just not super keen on. Uh, the, it does obviously look uh, oddly proportioned. You know, the body looks uh, really quite long um, compared to you know what what you would have expected pre twenty fourteen. But 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 that is that that look is in keeping with the Ibrahim et al twenty fourteen reconstruction. They said it had a you know a longer tail, uh, a longer body. Um, the number of um, uh, tall spined vertebrae that make up, the s make up the dorsal sail, I think it should be about 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, well, maybe it's 17. I don't know. I don't have any of the data in front of me. 17 uh, is pretty close to 20. I think that's correct. I can't believe they wouldn't have got that right. So in 2020, as you'll know, unless you've been hiding under a rock, uh, Ibrahim et al. have um, published this uh, discovery of a, a tail uh, of Spinosaurus aegyptiarchus, which shows that this animal had a really deep, laterally compressed kind of tail that looks like it was a swimming tail, it looks like it was a sculling tail. Now when Papo made this figure, and given that they released it in 2019, they would have been making it in 2018 and early 2019, I guess. Possibly, possibly even earlier. I don't know. Don't know how long it takes them to put the models together. Um, they obviously didn't know that. So, uh, if they had rigorously followed the Ibrahim et al. 2014 reconstruction, as they seem to have done for the rest of the animal, then they should air quotes there. They should have given the animal a a slender, uh, more you know, pointy tail without any kind of you know f fin uh, dorsally or or ventrally. And I also get the impression uh, don't have the Ibrahim et al. reconstructions in front of me, I wasn't clever enough to get those, um, they probably should have made the tail, I think, longer. I get the impression from um, what I remember of the Ibrahim et al. skeletal that the tail is proportionally longer than it is in this Papo model and also, yeah, uh, shallower and, you know, longer and more pointy. And instead, Papo have um, gone with this relatively kind of newt-like uh, tail, eel-like tail, with a hypothetical uh, you know, fin that's on the dorsal and ventral surface. So that's a complete speculation on their part, which they're obviously saying is in keeping with. Um, I was just looking at the words on the box to see if they mention it, and they they don't. Um, there, that text on the box on the box just says um, 
it says aquatic hunting position articulated jaw hand painted figurine and a french creation um, if i didn't say it, everything papo is papo is a french company everything they do is made in france um, Spinosaurus Gypjarchus was a giant over 15 meters long, close to the largest known theropod, such as Tyrannosaurus hyphen Rex, with a capital R. So points off for that. It's written Tyrannosaurus Rex incorrectly. Um, so yeah, they don't they don't talk about the justification for this, but this is a speculation. You could say that it that it's you know turned out to be a pretty sensible speculation in view of this new data on what the tail seemingly was actually like. It's not, um, to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure it's not evidence of prescience or you know them knowing what was going on before it was published it is just a fluke um, and if this tale were to be modified today in view of the 2020 publication by Ibrahim et al then the tale should be uh, even even deeper and um, more uh, laterally compressed um, and you know more obviously like a, a swimming uh, tail. Um, notice also they've done this kind of hypothetical um, like crocodile like uh, scoots on the side of the neck, body, and tail. Um, there's no evidence that those structures were present. It's not really a tremendously bad idea to have them, but it's not really a good idea either. I think they're just added there to, you know, give the animal more detail, make it look more interesting, maybe make it more, you know, vaguely more crocodilian. Um, but if you want this animal to be like a streamlined swimmer, then you probably wouldn't have features like that because amphibious uh, and aquatic animals generally don't want, you know things that can uh, uh, interfere with streamlining um, yeah but you know crocodilians have them so um, maybe that's why they why they did it now of course if you know anything about model dinosaurs and model spinosaurs in particular you'll also know that this is not the first um, Ibrahim et al style uh, Spinosaurus in fact by now there's actually a whole load of them um, I have been keeping up with them but the only one I have with me here most of my stuff is in storage for reasons you don't need to worry about the only one I have here is the 2019 Safari uh, Spinosaurus which as you can see is also a large figure and um, notice also yeah they've gone for the unusually short hind limb proportions they've got in it they've got it in a swimming pose this figure is obviously meant to be swimming it's not meant to be walking unlike the, the Papo one and notice also that it's been given crocodile like uh, dorsal um, scoots running along the neck, back and tail and they've also given it even a crocodile like uh, row of uh, serrated uh, scoots on the on the tail. Oh and uh, webbed toes. Um, this doesn't have any mobile bits and pieces but um, it's still, it's still, it's still a cool figure, I like it. Uh, Collector have also done uh, three uh, swimming uh, yeah, Ibrahim et al style Spinosauruses. Two um, well, one that's swimming, one that's walking, and then a deluxe one that's much larger, and I think is also walking. I've got I've got all those uh, somewhere, but um, but yeah, but Papo 2019 uh, takes the proverbial what's that phrase? Takes the uh, takes the biscuit or something. Um, I just noticed, yeah, webbed toes. The safari one just reminded me of that feature. Um, so I really I really quite like the the detailed look of the look of the foot there as it's as it's clenching but whether they've actually got the toe claws accurate as per as if everything in Ibrahim et al 2014 is dead accurate a bit of argument about that but let's say let's say they're, they're meant to have followed that then the um, the toe claws should actually be uh, flat bottoms relatively broad and not particularly recurved whereas it looks to me like well, it doesn't look to me that the, the the toe claws are on this model. They are relatively they are recurved. Um, can you see that? As is typical for you know as as, as big theropod toe claws are normally uh, portrayed. It's just been um, yeah they've they've given it that model. And uh, I think an another thing about the Abraham et al model is that they argued that Spinosaurus probably had what's called a totipalmate foot which means that if you imagine these are the four toes that there's webbing not just between two three and four but also between one and two so like a your pelicans are an example of animals have a totipalmate foot you have this like big thick webbing between 
all four of the toes and Ibrahim Mattel argued that for Spinosaurus but it doesn't look like we're definitely seeing it in Papo 2019 Spinosaurus. Digit 1, the Hallux, is um, yeah, not as descended, it's not, this, not as close to the ground uh, as the other digits and doesn't have an obvious webbing connecting it to digit 2. So I, I think that Papo might have rendered that detail of anatomy incorrectly, in, but incorrectly as per the Ibrahim Mattel 2014 model of Spinosaurus. So I think that wraps up just about everything I wanted to say about it. Um, I probably will keep the box, I'll have to stash it away somewhere, I won't be putting it in like the display cabinet with the other figures. I really like the idea of you know having like a bunch of figures sort of next to each other. I mean I've got enough Spinosauruses, uh, just Spinosaurus, Egyptiarchus alone to have like a whole shelf of the damn things, there's so many of them and I'm always accruing new ones. Um, but yeah, what a what a piece to have in a collection. Um, like I say, not cheap uh, for serious collectors only, or the ultra wealthy. If you can spend fifty pounds on a toy and just give it to a kid, well, good for you. <laughs> um, but if you uh, are able to buy this, and uh, if you take in seriously the possibility that you should get it, I mean, I, I, what, I'm a, like, I've got to get it somehow. Um, then you know get it from the brilliant people at everythingdinosaur.com they are offering it at the the best rate that I've seen online and um, yeah there you go I hope you found this interesting I'll stop there and uh, thanks for watching and uh, time will tell if this unboxing video will prove as interesting and worthy of hits as my other unboxing video and I've still got a bunch more to do because there's a load of other things that I've never taken out of their boxes and which I should. Okay, I will stop there. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye now. Bye.